What in the world were they thinking making this thing? Like, what? What? What's up guys, Diedrich Webb, welcome back to the channel. This just dropped today, I needed to get a video quickly filmed because yeah, let's talk about it. The Omnis Duo brand new controller from Alpha Theta, which is the owner parent company of Pioneer DJ, which if you didn't see, the Pioneer DJ came out with a statement basically saying that they're gonna start coming out with controllers under the Alpha Theta name. Now they haven't fully said that they're switching everything over to Alpha Theta, which they probably are, but Alpha Theta is the brand company that bought Pioneer and it seems they are switching the Pioneer logo away probably because they got to pay royalties every time they use Pioneer on their controllers so business company decision whatever opinion so let's get into it and talk about this controller so I got it up on the screen right now I do not have one in person because well I was not given one ahead of time but I did watch thoroughly the videos that have been put out about them. Again, I'm not gonna say names of channels and whatnot, but the guys that have put out the videos and everything, I really appreciate how thorough they went through the controller and talked about all the features. So let's start with the good and then I'll get into the bad at the end or my personal opinions and what all of you are probably thinking about this controller. First off, got to give some props on just in general, they're creating a battery operated controller now. The software side though of this is pretty sick. I really like the whole Bluetooth streaming so you can actually stream like if I wanted to pull up a YouTube video or a song or something like that and stream it to the controller, it actually plays on a deck. The software side of this is pretty crazy what they did with it. I can actually scratch my YouTube video on like deck one. It doesn't play on like an aux jack or anything like that. Like it actually plays on it. That's pretty cool. Also the wireless capabilities to project the sound to the wireless speakers, pretty damn cool, not gonna lie. Looking around the controller, solid ports across the board, the SD cards, the USBs, uh, true XLR outs, microphone in one and two. I still don't understand why we don't just have two XLR quarter inch jack mics on all Pioneer or Alpha Theta controllers. That would just be great, but we got, you know, we got master outs, all that good stuff. Hardware wise, it's, I mean, it's a pretty, looks to be a pretty good solid build controller. Battery operated, of course, with a pretty long battery life as well. It's honestly probably the only, <laughs> the only good things I have to say about this controller, other than I like the navy blue. I'm not gonna lie, I like the navy blue. Um, although I know most DJs would rather see white, black, gold, silver, but it is nice to see another color contrast. The navy blues become popular a little bit. Let's just get into the negative on this because that's about all I have on positive. One, the feel of the controller. It does not look great. The, the knobs don't look like they have enough grip to be able to work with. Um, especially in a fast DJ setting. This definitely looks more like a home controller, more portable, more playing on the side randomly. There's no buttons to be able to switch the pad modes. So there's that. Um, so you can't switch pad modes easily. You have to use the touch screen to be able to do that. A lot of the controls are on the touch screen, which I don't like again, because if you're DJing, normally we're DJing in like a low light environment and a lot of us DJ off a of feel. A lot of us, you know, we have muscle memory in our hands as to where the buttons are, where the things are, so that we can quickly get into good routines and workflows. And using a touchscreen is going to take a lot of time to get used to as to where you gotta tap and whatnot. And say you're sweaty and your hands are sweaty or you, got, you just picked up a water bottle and then you gotta try and use the touchscreen. I just don't see the touchscreen being practical in the DJ sphere. I mean, I have a touchscreen on my laptop that I they DJ with. My my laptop has a touchscreen. I never touch it because I'm scared I'm going to accidentally do the wrong thing. Or it does come in handy as a backup sometimes. I have my trackpad go out on my last laptop. I just got a new one. Um, but like, I don't like touchscreen controls. That's just so negative for me. And and I haven't even got to price yet. I just I I can see the direction they're trying to go. I like some of the new features that they're having inside of the software itself. I, I, I hope Serato takes some notes maybe, or they implement some of this, some of these features into uh, some of the other Pioneer gear, which is probably now gonna be Alpha Theta, but oh my God, man, there's just like, when I first saw this controller, I said, oh wow, they're coming out with a new, I was like, oh, Alpha Theta, yeah, they're switching the Pioneer brand, whatever. 
and they got a new beginner style DJ controller to compete with the new Mark uh, Go. And then I saw, which is what we need to get into now, the price tag, $1,500 for this controller. What? I, I don't even see, like, if you told me it was 700, maybe 800, I can see it. I can see it, but $1,500, you can get so many controllers and so many setups for $1,500. I can go buy a Jackery and power any one of my DJ controllers for less than $1,500. This is insane how much this costs. Like, I don't know what they're going for, and I've, I've been all over the comments. I've been watching the comments on Instagram, on Pioneers, I've been watching, and I've been literally just surfing the web all day, looking through all the stuff and people's opinions, and people are not happy about this controller. They're literally, WTF, what the fuck is this controller? Who approved this? Who's this for? Why did you even make it? I really don't know, to be honest. I, I, I have tried high and low to figure out why they came out with this. The only conclusion I can come up with is that they designed this controller for people to be able to buy and flex that I have this expensive little Go controller. But reading through the comments, like I'm reading comments from a lot of well-off DJs out there. Guys with blue checks that actually have blue checks because they have blue checks, not people that paid for the blue checks. No one seems to understand why they made this controller or what the purpose is for. I think, honestly, it's a TikToker controller. I think it's made for the TikTok generation so that they can DJ in the car and they have the expensive flexing controller because it's expensive and everybody knows it's expensive. But I, I, I'm hard pressed. Let's just do a comparison real quick. I'm going to Sweetwater, shout out to Sweetwater. Um, my boy Ben over there always hooks me up. But I just wanted to look at what you can buy for less than $1,500. You can get a flex a Flex 6 for $700, then you can go buy a Jackery for 300 bucks and you have a wireless, you have a battery powered DJ setup and it even comes with a stand and everything for $1,000. Oh, that's another thing. Uh, it doesn't have speakers. The Omnius, the Omnius Duo does not have speakers. So even in the car, it's not like great to DJ or anything unless you Bluetooth it to the controller. You can't just go practice and have speakers. The Newmark Mixstream Pro Go, I should really make a video on this. We bought one. And that thing is awesome. I I love ours. It's so good. Just for small, quick events where you need to just play some music and or you just want to go jam around, that thing's amazing. And it's seven hundred dollars. That's insane. Let's not forget you can get a roll-in for less than fifteen hundred dollars. You can get uh, let's see, we have the Denon Prime. Where's the Denon one up here? The Denon Prime Go. You can get that for $1,000, still $500 less. We can get a Denon DJ SC Live 2 standalone DJ controller for $989. Again, we can go buy a $300 Jackery and power this thing for like 12 hours, and we're still less than $1,500. The only thing these guys don't have is the wireless speaker capability, but that wireless speaker capability only works with the Alpha Theta Go 8 speakers. So, and personally, I would never trust wireless audio for events other than for side fills. My main speaker is always hardwire. I probably will never change my opinion on that until some really crazy technology comes out because the last thing I want is for my speakers to stop working because of wireless audio transmission. Now, if it's a side fill, back fill, crazy other fill, we can have issues, we can work around that, but it's just insane. Like, this is the, blows my mind right now. You can buy a DDJ Rev 5, brand new, four deck controller, or two deck, whatever, for $1,100. What else can you buy on here? Like, you can buy so many different controllers and be less. You can buy a Rain 1 for $1,300. You can, oh my God, dude, it's just insanity to try and comprehend how much they are charging for this controller. All of these, you can buy actual true, right there's the new Alpha Theta right there. Look at it, brand new. Oh my God. Look at the controllers around it in the same price range. That's the part that kills me. Your, this little tiny battery power controller is the same price as a Rain 4. What else we got? The DJ Flex 10, it's, it's damn close to it in price point. I don't understand. I don't, I don't, I really don't. Um, I'm, I'm done. 
that's my rant guys the omnius duo i just had to make a video and this controller is a uh, is getting a hard pass from me i don't know who the hell is going to buy it i would highly recommend none of you buy it honestly unless you want to go drop 1500 dollars on something stupid like that there's a million other things you should buy before you go buy this thing unless you just really need a tax write-off or really want to spend the money to flex and be on tiktok with the latest and greatest be my guest but personally the software side of this pretty cool i like where they're going with the software hardware on this thing and price point is just no fucking clue what they were thinking and the whole switch to alpha theta that's corporate that's corporate companies it's it's bound to come it's gonna come it's gonna happen like the pioneer deal they're probably having to every time they sell a pioneer product they have to pay royalties for using said pioneer brand so as a company that purchases a brand like pioneer they're still probably paying royalty fees for using the pioneer brand for a while, if not indefinitely. They're gonna naturally wanna switch the name to something else, but I saw a comment that resonated with me well. If you're Alpha Theta and you bought Pioneer and you're trying to evolve to not have the name Pioneer in your company and produce all products under Alpha Theta, you need to release it with like the latest and greatest CDJ, like the newest like CDJ 4000, but you know, make a whole different new version of it, new name, and because the CDJ has probably also got royalties behind it. But you need to make a product that is a stand, like a, a flagship product that Pioneer would release, like the newest and greatest CDJ with the crazy new software AI technology. That's what you need to create and launch to launch behind a new brand like Alpha Theta. Not what arguably most people in the comments are saying is a beginner level DJ controller with a professional DJ controller price point and just mass confusion. It is a sad day for the Pioneer community. It is a great day for the Denon and Rain community because <laughs> they're probably eating this up right now. Um, but yeah, that's my video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. More videos to come. I'm producing way more content this year. I'm going to stay as active as I can if you guys leave in the comment section down below what you guys think uh, on the new controller and drop hashtag squad if you're watching at this point. Uh, like the video, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Keep the record spinning and peace out.